It is my great honor to say thank you and to present the Dr. Thomas A. Dooley Award to Dr. Peter J. Daly, MD, from the class of 1982. A big round of applause, please. Well, that, that um, <clears throat> bring it down to my level. Um, I'm, uh, I, my comments I wanted to make were um, to correct uh, a great injustice, and <clears throat> the injustice is really that uh, that so many have contributed to this, especially my wonderful family and my family of the Romanos. When I applied to Notre Dame, I never knew anyone who had gone to Notre Dame. I had never visited the campus, and I was one of the, one of the rare ones, I assume. And, uh, but my in-laws are, are a Notre Dame legacy, really, the Romanos, and they've been uh, a great influence on me and this, this whole path that my life has taken wouldn't uh, exist without them. So I want to acknowledge and, create and correct that untruth that this is about uh, something I did alone because it was, if it weren't for my wife Lulu and uh, all my in-laws, it, it wouldn't be anywhere with it. But. <laughs> so this has been, you know, as you can tell, it takes, as, and Father Stride and everyone knows, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of hands to do this kind of work and a lot of uh, people to support it. And I, I'm totally indebted to Notre Dame for so many things. Most of all, uh, the way my faith grew in my, in my time as a student here and also in meeting Lulu, who um, didn't go to Notre Dame but went to St. Mary's, which was even far superior. Um, be one of my one of my daughters went to Notre, started at Notre Dame and transferred to St. Mary's uh, for nursing, of course. And um, I want to see if I can uh, just show you a few things and uh, uh, explain about uh, a little bit about the people who have contributed to this and just show you that this is really the ones that made a big difference. Um, first of all my mother and father-in-law, Buddy and Florence Romano. And uh, they started it all with their beginning their family with a lot of love. And then I met this student nurse at St. Mary's. And then these are our four children. My son, uh, Michael, Talia, Patrick, and Tricia. This is a picture of Angela who really prompted us and got it under our heart to try to get away from this uh, semi-truck trailer, which is the mobile operating room. This is a picture of the, our surgery center in 2000. Eight. We named it the Holy Family Surgery Center because it's a holy place, it's a family, and it's a surgery center. Uh, Father Phil Cleary blessed it and got us, got us started. That's Lulu and I uh, on one of our times there. And this is my brother-in-law, Danny Romano. She and uh, Lulu and Danny have been planning and scheming and helping things as a great dynamic duo. These are the three sisters, Chrissy, Trisha, and Lulu. They all look the same. Uh, this is my brother-in-law, Rocky, who's an orthopedic surgeon and works there with us as well. Uh, Trisha and Danny, the cleaning crew, taking a break, not working. This is uh, my mother and my sister-in-law, Trisha. There's Trisha cooking, one of the fine meals presented. <laughs> That's my brother-in-law, Michael, who's not a surgeon, but thinks he is. <laughs> this, is this is actually what he does. Is, uh, he's a great cook, but he's a great businessman as well. And Janie Reese, who's a fantastic nurse and has been in Honduras probably more than us. My good friend Kevin Spahn and Holy Cross Hog colleague, who makes it a lot of fun and joy. This is my daughter, Trisha, and Harveen, the little one she sponsors. These are two Notre Dame students. Uh, they're doing their best with the special needs girls on the ranch. And my daughter, Talia, who spent a year there teaching on the ranch. They have a lot of fun there with some games and, and pulls into the mud. This is my uh, nephew, Johnny Romano, who was down there entertaining everyone. He's the former um, uh, leprechaun, as you know. Um, these are some Notre Dame students from the Center for Social Concerns Global Health Seminar that uh, isn't really functioning now because there's a travel warning. I wanted to just show this briefly, and it's going to keep going. Let me, let me tell you about this gentleman. Seven years he lived with this non-union, and he's, he tried, he's, spent much time walking on it. You can see the callus there. And he was completely disabled by this. A street vendor trying to support his family. We were able to straighten his leg. 
This is someone who wouldn't get it otherwise. He's got a big built-up shoe the orphanage uh, folks made for him. And I, this is, you can see the, the scar on his neck and his forehead here. He lost a finger. Um, maybe I'll just tell you briefly about that. He, this goes to show that poverty is a dangerous lifestyle. And you live on the edge. And we fixed his tibia. And he came back to us a year and a half later, went back to his street vending and trying to make a living, and the, the, the gash across his neck, just over his carotid artery, which some people have an incision there for a carotid end arterectomy, that was from a machete, and the gash across his uh, forehead was also from a machete. They took a piece of his finger off. Um, it's just a dangerous thing to, to live in Honduras. Uh, to live in Haiti, to live in all kinds of different environments, and to have that exposure uh, to the people that have to live in that fashion is a great education. And it's had a great effect on, on my family and my kids. Um, my son Michael will be ordained a priest in uh, a month from now in the Diocese of St. Paul. And, uh, And we really owe that a lot of that, I think, to just his exposure to um, seeing the bias from the bottom, you know, seeing what it's like to see people like Fabio who had that injury. So I'll, uh, that's Michael when he was uh, ordained a deacon, giving a blessing to our kids here. Uh, we're inspired, or I've been inspired by many things. I've been inspired by Merlin, this young man, you can see I'm kind of pointing at him here, who grew up on the orphanage and um, is an orthopedic surgeon there full time now, and he's just a remarkable, remarkable man. Uh, Sister Colby, who is this joyful missionary of charities nun who um, is a, within the diocese now of um, Tegucigalpa there with us. And this is a chapel. The way Notre Dame has inspired me as well is knowing that there's a chapel in all the different uh, dorms and buildings on campus. And so Lulu and I insisted, and especially Lulu, who was angry that some of the other building projects have been going forward without the chapel being done. Uh, but she insisted that we have the chapel uh, next to the surgery center built. So that's on its way, but that was our first mass uh, celebrated by one of the other folks, uh, one of the other priests there locally. And then my favorite place I wanted to include, my favorite place in Notre Dame, of course, is the grotto. And I was happy to see uh, um, Dolly's uh, video about favorite places around campus. So I agree with you, Dolly, on that uh, choice. But um, I'd like to thank Rose Carroll and Rose and Mike for their nomination for this. I heard through the grapevine that uh, they spread the word on our, our little program here. Um, so. I can't think about this too much about getting this honor because then I'll get all choked up. So I just, I'm very humbled and thank you. <laughs>